We are now going to look at a couple of important definitions and even more important, the actual application of the H schedule. The first important definition is the definition of an asset in paragraph 1. So it says an asset includes property of whatever nature, whether movable or immovable, corporeal or incorporeal, excluding any currency, but including any coin made mainly from gold or platinum. So let's just up to there quickly. Movable, immovable gas, so uh, computer, movable, land, immovable, corporeal, incorporeal, a desk that you can touch, corporeal, incorporeal, intangible, uh, patent. But it doesn't include currency. Now currency here refers to money, coins and notes, basically. Right? It refers to the money sitting in the bank. But you'll see in a second, I'll explain a little bit more about that. But it includes any coin made mainly from gold or platinum. So something like a Kruger Rand, for example, will be included. And it includes any right or interest to or in such property. Now, just quickly there, if I have a debtor, so I sell goods to a person on credit, so they have to pay me, I've got a debtor. That debtor is an asset. If I sell that debtor to someone, right, if I sell it to someone, I can calculate a capital gain or a capital loss on that. So let's say the debtor owes me 100,000 rands. I just want some money because I'm, I need cash, so I sell it to someone, proceeds for 90,000 rands, there will be a base cost of 100,000 rands. Right, so I have a loss. Usually, if I just collect the money, the proceeds and the base cost are the same. Now, that you might not say, but isn't that currency? No, that's the right to receive money. So, if I've got a fixed deposit in a bank, it's also not currency. It's the right to claim money. Okay, so just understand that um, if you've got the right to claim money, it's not. Now, I just want to also point out something like a uh, forex gains or losses. That is still considered currency. It's not money. Okay, because why? It's not a right to receive or a right to receive. It's basically a loss that you've made on that. So just understand that, guys. Uh, forex and actual notes and coins, it's not. But the right to receive those amounts will be. Okay, so... Application of CGT, paragraph 2. This is, in my opinion, probably the most important paragraph to start out with, at least. But this paragraph is so important, if you don't understand this, you will suffer with a lot of the rest of the sections. Because this section tells us when capital gains tax will be applicable and in respect of which assets. I want you to pay a lot of attention to this. This is something that you need to basically memorize. Because you'll see a lot of the sections which, or where there's assets which are excluded or specifically included, all have to do with this slide. So first thing is, capital gains tax, when does it apply? For a resident, it, is, it applies to the disposal of any asset. So if you're a resident, if you sell something in South Africa, it applies. If you sell something in America, it applies. Right, whatever asset, any asset. If you are a non-resident, it applies, and this is very important, to the disposal of only the following assets. Assets of a permanent establishment in South Africa. So you are an American, but you've got a shop in South Africa where you sell things, and that shop is considered a permanent establishment. That will be indicated to you in an exam. Permanent establishment is basically something with a degree of permanence. So it's, uh, it's very. So there's a, you've got a shop in South Africa, a business in South Africa, and you sell things through it. Right. Anything you sell in respect of that, obviously not with a company because you are a natural person if you're looking at it, or if you are a company, a company that has a permanent establishment, that will, amount will be included. Or any immovable property in South Africa. So if you own a property in Johannesburg or Cape Town or Bloemfontein or wherever, that will be subject to CGT. Now just with this, this includes also, not as common to see, so, but I've just included it here, if you've got shares in a company, that will also be included. But only if that company, 80% of the value of the company is due to the immovable property. And you have 20% 20 or, 20 or more of the shares in it. So then your shares will also be subject to it. So guys, that will be, for example, I have indicated to you, it will be a company. And I say, why is this company worth as much as it is? 
well, we've caused it to land on it. So the company is worth 10 million rands, and 8 million rands of that is due to the market value of land that owns. Right, and the 2 million, the rest of it can be whatever, stock, cash. That, what I've just discussed, the concept I want to introduce you to, which you're going to see I'm going to refer to, I find it's an easy way of thinking about it, is what I call the CUT net. I don't want you to refer to it in your exams, guys. It's more of a little, my own term I use here. The CDT net just means if CDT applies. So if you want to say to that, you can just say when CDT applies. Okay, so what it means is if something gets caught in this net, that is when CDT will apply to it. So for as long as it's in that net, CDT will apply to it. So for a resident, there's any asset. And for a non-resident, immovable property in South Africa, an asset attributable to a permanent establishment. Now I'm saying to you, the principle here, so understand the concept. CDT can only be calculated for the period of the assets spent inside the CDT net. So here's an example. Mr. X sells an asset, the proceeds is a million rands, and the co base cost is 600,000. So it makes 400,000 rands capital gain. He owned the asset for a total of 10 years, and I say assume that only 7 of those years the asset spent inside the CDT net. So the concept which you need to understand, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter why it was only seven years, just understand that assets can move in and out of it, as you'll soon see. Understand the concept, because seven out of the ten years was in the CGT net, seven out of ten of that capital gain, so 280,000 rands, will be subject to CGT. The rest will not be. So we're going to refer to in and out of the CGT net quite often. Again, remember what it understands. If something is in the CGT net, it means that it's subject to CGT. Basically, these concepts over here, but I'm going to just quickly mention, th certain assets like trading stock will be subject to gross income. There will be no CGT implications. So we will consider that as not being in the CGT net. You'll see some assets are not subject to CGT. Personal use assets, for example, we'll consider that as not being in the CGT net. Why? It's not subject to CGT. So it's the same concept. 